Hi guys, so as you can see, I may have come home with another car. Uh, don't worry, my wife found out about this one before I bought it this time. Uh, but anyway, this, the body's in excellent shape. It's a 73 TR6. Uh, it doesn't run. Uh, the engine cranks over. Uh, but I, the price was right on it, and so I decided, okay, this is a car. The body's in great shape. The paint, I think, will clean up pretty nice. And so I, I thought I'd take a chance on it. Uh, Any time that you're looking at a car like this, especially a Triumph, there's a few things that you want to check. Uh, so I figured I'd make this video and kind of take you through a few of those things, uh, maybe help you along if you're looking at a similar project. For starters, one of the things that you want to do is take out all of the spark plugs. Before you crank it over, you want to make sure that you pour some oil down, those, uh, down the cylinder bores. Uh, I use Marvel Mystery Oil. There's probably a number of things that you can use, but you just want to do that because if you turn it over and it hasn't run in years, uh, you could be scratching up the bores in the cylinders pretty badly. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is a little bit farther forward on the engine. This is a common problem with TR6 engines and any of the, actually a lot of Triumph motors. Now we're going to start up here right at the front of the engine because this is a piece that a lot of people overlook. Uh, you see I've got a dial indicator that's on there. I'm going to kind of zoom in on the needle. Uh, the dial indicator is resting against that front crankshaft pulley. And so what we're basically trying to do is see how much forward and back motion does the crankshaft have. There's some thrust washers that are right at the back. Uh, the only real way to get at, I mean, if, if you're pulling the thrust washers, you're basically going through the engine. So this is the first test to see, uh, is it something where I should really just try and start this car or should I pull the engine and kind of go a little bit more in depth? Uh, this is something that you definitely want to check if you're buying a TR6 because if there's too much play here, uh, you're going to have some potentially major issues. You may be out of block. And so you want to make sure that that's something you look at pretty closely first. Okay, so normally I'm going to be on the other side of the car for this. It's a little bit of an awkward angle. Uh, but what I'm going to basically try to do is we're going to lever the crankshaft back and forth on this pulley. Now when I say on this pulley, uh, there's actually a, a bit of the crankshaft that's down at the bottom, then there's a layer of rubber, and then the, the actual pulley part is on the outside. Don't lever too much on the pulley. Uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna force around the rubber. You're basically gonna destroy the damper and that's kind of an expensive part. So what you wanna make sure that you do is, is go deep down, be very careful where you lever. I'm gonna move it and then I'll, I'll move the screwdriver out of the way so you can see. Make sure the crankshaft's all the way back first. Uh, don't push anything too hard. You're just gonna bend the screwdriver. Zero out your, zero out your meter and then from there, You may see it move a little bit too much. See where it settles, right? You see the difference? And what you might not be able to see is the actual movement in the pulley. Uh, so if you don't have a dial gauge, that's okay, but keep an eye on how much the pulley's gonna be actually be moving back and forth. If it's more than, if it's about the width of your fingernail, you might be able to be okay. If it's less than your fingernail, you're fine. More than that, and I might even consider walking away from the car, but definitely be prepared for some more major repair bills. For the next step, if you haven't already, pull out the spark plug wires. Uh, you want to do a compression test. Sorry, not just the wires. You want to pull out the spark plugs. We're going to look at that, those later, but start to back. You want to screw in, thread in a compression tester. If you don't have one of these, they're really pretty cheap. You can find them on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And so definitely worth picking up if you're going to be looking at engines or even diagnosing your own. I mean, honestly, finger tight is probably okay for most of the time what we're doing here. But thread in your gauge. You want to have your coil disconnected at this time. Uh, if your coils, uh, you don't have to, but you'd stand a chance you're going to burn something out. So uh, just be aware of that. And then make sure the car is in neutral. Make sure that your battery is plugged in. And then you want to crank it just a few times. Maybe you can see the gauge there. Uh, let's see, we're just over 100 is the reading. The gauges aren't all going to be 100% accurate. What we're really looking for is to see are all of the cylinders going to be a similar amount. 
So disconnect the gauge, set it somewhere where you're not going to drop it, and move on to the next one. Okay, what you're looking for is that you want to see all of the cylinders within about 10% of each other. So uh, if your first one is 100 PSI, for example, well, if, anything, if the rest of them are over 110 or uh, if you have one that's maybe 85, that's a problem. Uh, it's kind of normal by the time you get to the last cylinder, the pressure might be a little bit higher just because the oil might have started to get into the cylinder bores. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I have nothing to back that up, but it uh, makes sense to me and it's kind of something that I've noticed. But anyway, uh, make sure that all of the cylinders are roughly the same pressure. If they're close, you're good to go. Uh, on the TR6, um, uh, the numbers that I was getting were kind of in the 110-ish range, 105, 110. That's roughly 7 to 1 compression. Uh, and for the late TR6 engines, unfortunately in the U.S., that's also kind of normal. You want to check out your spark plugs. Uh, first of all, make sure they're clean. Uh, these actually look a bit like either the engine was burning rich or uh, a couple of them are slightly wet. It may be leaking oil. Uh, I don't know the answer to that yet, but uh, you also want to check. Uh, there's usually a number on the side of the plugs. Uh, I am going to have to convert that one since normally I use champions, but you want to make sure that the number matches up to the kind of car that you're trying to put the plugs in. Uh, Get a gapping tool, something like this is readily available. You can also use feeler gauges, but you want to see what's the plug gapped to. Uh, these right now are actually 30 thousandths, which for a TR6 is a little bit too big. Um, you know, kind of quick and dirty way if you're in the field, slap this against concrete a little bit and then kind of regap it. You can open up the gap using a tool like this. Uh, if you don't want to do that or if you want to kind of do it a little bit more correctly, You can get one of these tools that you could, that you could use to, uh, to kind of bend the electrode on the, on the spark plug, although you need to find the end that fits. Yeah, anyway, uh, gap your plugs before you put them back in, and better yet, if you don't know the history of the plugs, you're generally just better off replacing them. Before you put the plugs back in, make sure to check the rocker clearance. Over time, this could be something that gets thrown off. First, you need to take the valve cover off. If you have trouble taking the rocker cover off, be careful not to put a screwdriver under it because you might just bend something. There is a plastic tool though that you might be able to slip under and use. Okay, for the valve clearance, there's a procedure in the manual, but technically what you really need to remember is just that this, that, that um, Triumph engines tend to work in straight, in sort of pairs, okay? Uh, so think of, think of the engine as a mirror. You've got the front half, the back half, these two, these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. Here's what I mean by that. So right now, you've got the third valve and... One's about to go down. One and one and three, sorry, are on, are down currently, which means you want to check the opposite end. You see, if you just sort of flip it over, one and three are down. You want to check ten and twelve. 
A valve clearance on a TR6 is supposed to be 10 thousandths. You get your feeler gauge. You don't have to turn anything yet, but if you put a little bit of pressure down on there, you can make sure that the rocker's at least back. This one seems a little loose. That does too. You should be able to move the, the feeler gauge between, but uh, not this easily. So those are going to need a little bit of adjustment. And the way that you do that, loosen the adjustment nut. And then simply tighten the screw until it's where you want it to be. There we go. Right there. While keeping the screw from moving, tighten the nut back down. That does not have to be super tight. And double check it. That's about what we want. The reason we left the plugs out is because it's going to be really easy to turn the engine. And so what you want to do is just turn the engine in the normal direction that it would move anyway. You see the next two valves went down. So what's the opposite from these two? Well, these are in the back half of the engine. You're looking at the front right here. You want to adjust four and six. So let's do that next. Way loose. Same thing. I have a feeling this is going to be a theme. You want to go around the rest of the engine the same exact way. When you see the first two valves that were already down, go back down. You've gone all the way around. We've already adjusted these. We're just going to double check them real quick. Still perfect. Valve clearances are now set.